From outside, only a hole can be seen, but this leads nowhere. After a couple of paces, you find yourself against a wall of rock. I can't say this was cleverly contrived by me. It's just the remains of one of my bungled beginnings, but it seems wise to leave it as it is. <laughs> Yet I know there can be folly in wisdom. The abandoned work... The dead end might actually suggest to someone there's something nearby worth finding, yet I'll take that risk. I'm not a coward. Some risks must be accepted. I'm not compelled by cowardice. <laughs> and the entrance, it's a thousand paces away. It's as secure as anything can be in this world. But it's both strong and weak. Strongly protected by camouflage, with a moss roof that hides it to perfection. Weakly protected in that a step in a certain spot would bring the intruder tumbling down and then my burrow would lie open, assuming the surprise visitor is a creature of skill and enterprise. Yet could I not make that moss roof more secure? Yes. Unquestionably, yes. But there is a balance of security, a fine calculation. Security requires risk, a calculated risk. Rapid exit, rapid entrance, dive out, dive in. <laughs> no time for digging when pursued. Yet I have dreamt of a snout <laughs> smelling around my entrance. Bad dreams of being tracked down, sniffed out. Yet again, the enemy might not come through the door. I dig, others dig. <laughs> the enemy might be tunneling towards one of my tunnels. The enemy might not even know he's my enemy. My extensive tunnels invite a chance discovery by one of the robbers who toil through the earth. Ah, there can be folly and wisdom. My labyrinths would confuse any creature which burst in, but it's more likely to be chanced upon than a small cave. Yes, that's the risk. And yet, as I am a compulsive digger and have dug so well and know my passages intimately, I would have the advantage over the attacker. Hmm. I might kill rather than be killed. I might eat rather than be eaten. I might be secure even if discovered. Hmm. Though whatever conclusion I reach, even now at this high point when my labors are, are at an end, I never enjoy a tranquil hour untouched by fear. I never securely think I'll survive the fight. The fight to come that always clouds my mind, for I'm growing old. And I might not be strong enough to survive the fight, even on my own terrain. Yet I'm not so old that I've lost my pleasure in the fine calculations of defense, attack, and counterattack. <laughs> my mind is ever active. <laughs> yes. Though unfortunately active at times due to the rumors. The rumors I once heard when I did hear things of creatures that rise from below of enemies far more fearsome than those that work at my level. <sighs> How could I plan a defense against them? Against the deep enemies that destroy everything at once? No, I'd never reach the daylight if an attack erupted from below all around. No, no, no chance at all. And it's not just rumors, but tremors. Oh, yes. Yes, I've heard them. I've pressed an ear to the ground and held my breath and listened to the earth tremble. They know I'm here. I dig quietly. I'm able to work without attracting the attention of an enemy to 50 paces away, an enemy that is at my level. But the creatures of the inner earth might have peculiar senses. Well, they must, if they work deep and strike precisely. Perhaps the rumors exaggerated their skills. Yeah, but perhaps they didn't. And yet I like the strength to dig down far into the earth and counterattack, so I must rest and watch and listen and hope. I dig alone. I'm able to work without attracting the attention of anyone. And yet again, though I say I dig alone, that's not strictly true. The field mice and others have worked the soil, opened their own tunnels, and increased the <laughs> ventilation. <laughs> My excavations could be mistaken for the work of some other creature, a number of which are surprisingly tasty. Oh, yes, I've experimented. Yes. <laughs> 
Yet I must not give a false impression of the earthly activity deep down. No, my burrow is perfectly still. And that's the most beautiful thing about it. <laughs> most of the time. In a moment, this stillness could end and I could be destroyed. But now all is still. For hours, I can patrol my tunnels and hear nothing except the occasional scratching of a small animal. Sometimes I kill and eat. Then all is silent again. Ah, I revel in the beauty of the silence and the distant fragrance of the wood in my nostrils. And when the summer fades and the nights lengthen, my feelings are sublime. I can face winter secure in the earth. I can sleep and wake up in stillness and warmth. I'm not a wanderer of the woods sleeping under leaves. No, I'm a creature with a home. I have a wide choice of places to sleep. I've got 50 suitable rooms. I can pick and choose. Of course, I have a special place. One room I've referred to as the castle. By thinking hard and digging hard, I've contrived the most secure room, which no creature could surprise. No, no I've certainly worked for my security. <laughs> My calculations for the site of the castle, calculations and recalculations, always brought me to a place of sandy soil, loose earth, and small stones. And I worked until I bled, shifting and compacting. My blood is in the soil here. <laughs> and there were days of despair when I abandoned the burrow and left it defenseless. Yet when I returned with hope somehow revived, I, I found everything untouched. My burrow is perfectly placed. Creatures pass it by and suspect nothing. My castle's also my store. Most of my provisions are here. But this is the point of security. If I'm secure anywhere, it's in this place, my castle. And yet my reflections never cease. I'm always considering whether I've achieved the optimum arrangement. My mind watches my mind. No plan has ever been devised that's beyond improvement. And so I've made experiments. I've shifted my stores to some of my smaller rooms. I've, I've tried spacing stores regularly and used just every third chamber. I've tried just having four other storerooms. I've tried just having one other store. And so for a while there was a second chamber, but now everything is back here. If I can't defend this place, I'm lost. Such is my reasoning. But I always search for the folly of my wisdom. And yet, there is an evident advantage to keeping the rest of the burrow free of obstacles. I must maneuver. I must monitor. I must move rapidly at times. And if some other digger of the soil chanced to dig into one of my scattered stores, wouldn't he have proof that somebody was here, hmm? But if he chanced on an empty room at the end of an empty corridor, might not he turn away? Yes, he might, he might, perhaps. <laughs> and yet having all my stores around me is a temptation. <laughs> having all the provisions I captured and fetched here, Having the game that I bagged uh, does incline me now and then to a reckless debauch. <laughs> and each of these uh, renders me helpless. All my precautions are forgotten until I, I uh, lift myself off the floor and uh, repair my person and my home. I make a tour of the world, a tour of inspection. To atone for my breach of discipline, I make repairs and improvements. Even though at times I've entertained the notion of perfection, of having finished my work perfectly. I know this is mere foolishness. No, there's nothing perfect in this world. No, nothing. But as I toil at my repairs and improvements, I regain some self-respect. I put my debauchery from me and I become a sober workman again. Yet in these states of atonement, I'm always tempted to rework completely the passages around the entrance. They show a defective spirit. <laughs> they created a maze. It's as if my design were meant for entertaining guests after lunch. It's not based on a rational analysis of the just defense. It's a, it's a toy. Yet, despite this folly, I can 
Once in a while, delude myself that I finished my work perfectly. This can only be the result of a self-willed blindness, which is a debauchery of the mind, and to be feared more than debauchery of the body. But what is to be done with the entrance? That childish maze? How often I face that question here in my castle, and how much shame I've experienced when remembering my past pride. I was proud because I thought I'd been wise to make a maze, or such is the folly of wisdom. But I can't just sweep it away. I can't quickly rework my entrance, and while shifting vast quantities of soil, I'm most likely to be caught distracted by my work, most likely to be caught distracted by the vicious creatures of the wood. By striving to make myself more secure, I risk all of my security. There's the reason. There's the logic. And yet I'm drawn to the problem of the entrance, to its defective design. Even though I acknowledge that the... The soil here and there, the rocks and roots of force compromises in the building of my burrow. However, the defects in the entrance are due to the defects in my character. That's the difference, and that's the source of shame. So, I'm forced to have this argument with myself repeatedly, yet each time I reach the right conclusion, just leave it as it is. <laughs> but also, each time I'm, I'm troubled in this way, my, my fears slide from the maze at the entrance to my door. That trapdoor that separates me from the world. There is the burrow, and there is the world, and a camouflaged door lies between them. There have been seasons when I left it undisturbed for so long that the moss over the door binds itself to the ground on all sides. And I can wait there below at the very edge of the burrow and listen to the world, and I ask myself, why go out? Here is the burrow, your domain, your security. Why step out into the world? It is fear which makes me brave. That's the answer. I need to see the creatures pass by and leave my door undisturbed. I need to be assured of their ignorance, their lack of curiosity, their concern with their own concerns. Fear is an answer, but there are others. Fear alone wouldn't make me spend days and nights outside. <laughs> no. It is only there, in the wood, that I can enjoy the full range of my talents. There I track, stalk, and kill. I'm a hunter, alert, and roaming free. I'm not a defender of the fortress constrained by his own defenses. <clears throat> and yet though my excursions allow me to replenish my store of food, I spend much time above the burrow in my observation post. I've built a hide even more perfectly camouflaged than my moss-covered entrance, and into my hide I crawl. A shallow trench disguises the path, and secretly I approach my post and observe. I watch the creatures come and go, because my burrow is not in the remotest spot. It's fifty paces from a path. Not the busiest path, but one with sufficient traffic to give momentum to those traveling east and west. No creature would camp there. No, I'm free of that fear. And any creature which approached too close would have to watch its back. Yeah, and how quickly the hunter become the hunted. <laughs> and if I saw someone exploring too close and knocking at my door, death would follow at once. Annihilation! I would drink his blood. <laughs> Yet that hasn't happened. The creatures on the path continue on their way. It's a path, so naturally it's for those with somewhere to go. And in my observation post, I'm reassured. I take the measure of the world and I confirm my obscurity. And yet there always remains the problem of my return to the burrow. Ah. In part, this comes from my love of the burrow and my delight in watching its secret door and contemplating my domain underground. And there's a particular joy from being outside the burrow and allowing my mind to wander within, to explore it all with my mind's eye and memory. Yes, yes, pure contemplation, yes. Hmm. Yet there is also a fearful part. How do I return home? And that's the question I always face that distracts me in my observation post. How do I regain the burrow? 
However long I spend looking about me and listening for enemies, there comes a moment when I must raise the trapdoor, give my attention to keeping its camouflage intact. There's nobody to guard my back. There are times when I regret this, when I feel the lack of a guard. If I had a guardian for the entrance, a sentry on duty, I would be more secure. And yet, more insecure. <laughs> oh, beware the folly of wisdom. Always that, always remember that. Would not the guardian want to know more about the burrow? Hmm? Wouldn't he be curious and pressing? Yeah. Wouldn't he ask in winter for shelter from the rain and the cold? He would. Unquestionably, he would. I don't like the thought of a guard coming down here and rummaging about. No, it'd still be an invasion. And once he knew where to find my entrance, what would stop him from creeping in without permission? Nothing. And if this one other person knew about my secret door, might not the word spread? He might not be as solitary as myself. That's unlikely. So, who would guard the Guardian? Huh? Who, indeed? I'd have to kill him once I'd recruited him, and quickly! And yet, there is another possible means of making my return to the borough more secure. A second entrance. If I had two doors, might not that help? If I had a second door, I could go through the first, hurry to the second, Creep down, climb down, and keep watch. Oh, I could watch the wood for hours. I could be almost certain no one had noticed my descent and was preparing to follow me. So in a fashion, I could be more secure. Yet in another fashion, doubly insecure. No! Oh! Two trapdoors doubles the risk. Doubles the risk of security. There's always the possibility of someone treading on the very spot which would reveal the hollow underneath. I've experimented. I've made my door lighter, and I've made it sturdier. Currently, it is of a lighter construction to allow for rapid movement. Solid door is slower to lift, particularly when buried under moss and grass. Who knows when I'll need to run? Solid door could be a trap. And however solid I make it, a careful, observant creature could easily detect a false feeling underfoot. And the work required to build a second entrance close to the second would easily attract attention. Oh, and it to spread the soil in the wood nearby, or risk carrying it through the wood, or reopen my old excavation entrance in that obscure thicket. Yet every part of the wood has its visitors. However thick the brambles, however much the thorns rip and cling. My luck held when I first built the bureau. And when I extended it, when I was building and rebuilding, well, I had less to risk. My domain had not reached its present magnificence. Eh, my domain was not complete. No. Now, to resume work on a large scale would be to risk it all. Oh, folly and wisdom, yes. Yet I have to regain the burrow somehow. If I go out the door, I must come back through it. The logic is inescapable. So, I have a routine, a discipline. I completely cover my observation post. Then I creep within 10 paces of the door and I freeze. For an hour, sometimes more, I move nothing but my head. And within my head, my eyes, and in that hour, I even feel ashamed to breathe. Then, when I feel the moment is ripe, I slither to the trap door, work it free, Grasp the roots sticking out from the walls, lower myself, position the trapdoor, climb down, and lurk in the dark. I wait two more hours, and I'm listening, listening, listening. Nothing else in the wood, I'm sure, can listen to perfection. And listening there is vital defensive work, for it would be dreadful to have been detected. It's the sort of dread which disturbs my sleep. To have brought an enemy here through carelessness, to die because of that would be to die in shame. It would be to die in failure. I would have betrayed the burrow. Oh, better to die above. Better to be slaughtered in the wood. Better by far to die away from here. Yes. Yet the idea of my blood trickling into the soil oh, it does have its appeal. Then I and the burrow would merge. Forever I would be here. My blood could never be removed from the earth. However, if I did die above, away from the burrow, 
away from the door. My burrow might remain undetected. The beauty of its silence would endure undisturbed. It would be beauty unknown, like a world without creatures. Silence, perfect and eternal. Ah. <sighs> Even if it could never be experienced, it could be contemplated and desired. Mm, particularly now. Particularly now. Because I can hear it again. It's here. The whisper. The whispers returned here. Around here. Around me. Yes. Sadly. Yes. Is it a whisper? Or is it a whistle? It's a noise that I can say, and when I hear it, the burrow is transformed. It's my burrow no longer. Not truly. There have been times when I have suspected that I could hear a torrent somewhere, that I could hear a torrent of water. I've gone up and down each tunnel and into each room, and I've looked for signs of water trickling down, and I found nothing. And I picked a dry site for my burrow. There was a well. I call it a well, but the stream down below, which has made its own passage through the rock, can only be heard when I'm climbing from crevice to crevice. And the noise, the whisper... The whistle does not appear all at once after heavy rain. If I could say it was a sudden torrent caused by a surge of water, I could be secure and happy, but I can't say that. And the, the noise is not a gurgle, it's not obviously water. It's constant. Whenever I hear the noise, it does not rise and fall. It's not like a dry river gaining and losing water. No, there's no change at all. And even more perplexing, it's the same everywhere. The whisper, the whistle, pervades every corner of the burrow and it torments me. How can it remain the same? From one end of the burrow to the other, even in this place, in my castle, I hear it evenly. The noise, the whisper, the whistle does not change and it torments me. But noise has a source, so how can that be? It must be somewhere in particular. And there's only one exception. Underneath the moss of the trap door, I can't hear it. When I'm just by the entrance, the noise is not with me. This makes for a strange inversion. The door, that place of fear, becomes a sanctuary where I can rest from the noise. It's not a great noise. It doesn't stop me from hearing other things. A, 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 a scrambling mouse, for example, but it is a puzzle, a tormenting puzzle. If I don't know the source of the noise, then how can I say if it's a danger or not? And if it is a danger, what is its category? How can I place it on the list of threats to my existence, of threats to the burrow? I must put it on the list. I must, and act accordingly. Doubt is torture. Yes, torture. Uh, mm, yet it could be the mice. Their little tunnels, their passages may have penetrated across the burrow. And, and, and when the wind blows north, northwest, for example, the faint, faint noise might, might be made. Oh, does my happiness depend upon... A, a north, northerly wind, but I can feel no disturbance, no, no, no movement anywhere in the burrow. I can feel no constant breeze that the earth could transform into a whisper or a whistle. No, I can't feel it, so how can I hear it if the mice in the tunnels are to blame? It could be creatures smaller than mice. The burrow can be infested, which is a terrible thought. But even so, I would be glad to discover the definite cause. Yes, yes, if there were tiny creatures everywhere, the noise would be constant and, and uniform. And, and so, and so I've dug. I've dug all through my walls, through the entire length of the burrow, and I've discovered... Nothing! No small creatures whispering and whistling. I've sifted the soil through a mesh ever so fine. I've crumbled the earth, I've rubbed samples into dust, and i found nothing. No, not a thing which could produce a noise. I've just marred the burrow. That's all I've done. And what a wall has been excavated with such crude and savage blows. It's impossible to bring it back to its original smooth, elastic state. Yes, yes, it's impossible. Impossible as my ears are plagued by the noise, that torturing noise. It could be my burrows. Surrounded by another burrow. Perhaps I'm not infested, but encircled. There could be creatures walking all around. In the beginning, soon after I started digging, I heard the noise for the first time, and I asked myself, was anybody else digging somewhere in this vicinity? Oh, foolishly, I failed to answer the question, and for a long time there was silence. The whisper, the whistle only returned when I was committed to the burrow, when I was far advanced. Oh, dug myself in. This is my domain, but is it all one great trap? 
Uh, well, my enemy's getting ready to invade from all directions. Uh, though I don't see how they could keep the noise. So even whenever I stop, whenever I pause, what I'm doing, the noise is there. Do they never rest? Do they always work in all places at once? Do they need such extensive preparations to attack me? Oh, it's all so strange. It's frightening. And so I've contemplated a counterattack. Hmm. I've considered digging a new tunnel deep into the soil away from my burrow. Yeah. Yes, and I would dig in perfect silence, and I would inevitably break through and walk amongst them and slaughter them by the dozens, and if I died in the lake of their blood, I would die exceedingly well. Yes! Yet a doubt, a doubt torments me. This encircling burrow, these enclosing siege works, they might just be a phantom. I might dig wildly forever and achieve nothing except the ruin of my own creation. This new and superfluous tunnel might just serve as a monument, a monument to my own uncontrolled mind, my rash thoughts. The evenness of the noise suggests, whatever my counter-arguments, that there is only one enemy and that he is working deep down, that my destroyer is below me. And so the noise is the same everywhere, and, when, and that he works in long, steady shifts in ways completely alien to me. Yeah. And when he chooses, he will rise up from the earth. But am I prepared? No, I can't even pretend I am. I don't understand my own defensive plans anymore. Why haven't I prepared avalanches to, to bury an attacker and destroy him? Why are there no, no spike pits? Why no poison? Oh, my defenses are so feeble, so inadequate, so naive. And, 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 and yet... <sighs> it's gone. The noise. I can't hear the whisper, the whistle. It's like many men whispering together far away into the night. Yes, it's like that, but it, it, it's... It's gone. And here I am in my castle. The castle of my burrow. Yes, my burrow. I've dug my burrow. And it looks complete.